strong enough, daring enough, trusting enough to get out in all of that snow. And I know half of you didn't get your driveways clean, but you ran on through all that snow anyhow. Amen. I wish I had some more anyhow folk in the house. Anyhow, I'll trust in the Lord. Anyhow, I'll praise God. Anyhow, I'll be there. Rain, snow, sleet, or hell. I'm going to attend my worship services on Sunday morning and get my praise on. Amen, somebody? Amen. Give God a quick praise right there. As you bow your heads, lift up a word of prayer for me even now. Lift up a word of prayer for churches all across our state. Lift up a word of prayer for Evening Star Baptist Church and the loss of their pastor, Dr. Stephen Sullivan. And also my good friend in church, Mount Olivet in Columbus, Ohio, who lost their pastor, our friend, Dr. Charles E. Booth. Pray for the churches. Pray for the churches. Pray for me right now. If you want to hear a word from the Lord, you've got to ask him. And if you ask him to speak, I just felt somebody just then just started praying right. I see people still looking at me and still looking towards God. You can't get nothing being distracted by me. You have to focus in on God, on your prayers. Is there something that you need from the Lord? Is there something that you need to hear from God? You've got to ask God to get into my spirit. I felt your prayers just then. I felt somebody really talking to God. You've got to talk to God and ask God to use me, hide me behind his cross, and I declare to you something will happen in this house today. Spirits and demonic spirits will move and encouragement will occur. Something marvelous will happen. Oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, we're believing that when we ask you to speak to us, you will say to us, there is a word from heaven and you will speak to us. Whatever the needs are right now, remove me from myself. Let your spirit come through so that these, thy children and thy people will hear from you and not from me. Give us the glory that comes with the preaching when we preach your word. And if there's somebody here today who do not know you in the free pardon of their sin, don't know that they need you, I pray, God, that an urgent need inside of their very spirit happens, that you will rattle them up and that they will not leave out of this place without making sure their relationship with Christ Jesus is right. If there's someone here who has not been baptized, God, that they will say, no, I'm not going to delay it another day. I'm going up front and I'm going to give my life to Christ. Thank you, God, for doing all things well. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Give God another great big praise. Amen. How many of you have your, have your Bibles today? Let me see your hand. Hey, man, how many of you didn't bring your Bible? Let me see. No, don't let me see your hand. Just bring it next week. How many of you use your apps? Let me see that. How many of you use your apps now? Now, you know you can't handle that Bible with that app. You've got to go back and get the hardcover book. Hey, Amen. Then you can flip through it and know what thus saith the Lord. And I'm pray, praising God for our staff who have given to us a new uh, smartphone app. A new smartphone app. How many of you know about apps and loading apps on your phone? How many of you don't know? Let me see your hands. All right, we'll have a class for you. An app is an app is something that you can quickly go to, and all of these marvelous things about the particular institution that you're trying to reach comes up. And so we now have our own app. Give God some praise for that. You want to know what's going on? You don't have to go to the website and Google us and all of that. Just Download the app, and you're going to get everything immediately. And guess what? You won't have to pay for any sermons anymore. All you have to do is download those, those sermons right on your app. And if you want to know what's going on in the church, like you want to know whether or not you should get your ticket early for the Women, Amazing Women Conference, it'll come up on your app. And then you can also pay for it right there on your app and uh, get your tickets in advance. And you ladies, you need to get your tickets because there's only a limited number of tickets, so make sure you get them right away. Amen, somebody? So you're going to download your what? It's the Mount Zion of Oakwood Village app. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, the 13th chapter. There is a very interesting story there. The Bible says in chapter 13 of the book of St. Luke, now, did you find it in your, in your app? 
you didn't find it in your Bible app. You can't even see it. Shame on you. So all of you are dependent upon my technicians to put it up on the screen. Well, the Revised Standard Version may or may not be there. It's probably the New King James Version. But here is what it says, and you can repeat after me. Did you find it yet? See, my old deacons, they all got their Bibles. Oh, that sounds so good. Y'all look good with them Bibles in your hand. I didn't know y'all were still carrying your Bibles. Amen. Repeat after me. One Sabbath day, and verse 10, one Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent, doubled up for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. Turn, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you stand up straight? Say, neighbor, are you straight up? Say, neighbor, you look a little crooked today. Verse 12, it says, when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Turn to your neighbor and say, it was in church. Say, you can get healed in your sickness in church. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that she had healed her on the Sabbath day. Say, neighbor. Sundays is always a good day to get your healing. Oh, somebody ought to shout right there. Repeat after me. There are six days of the week for working. Jesus said to the crowd, come on those days to be healed not on the Sabbath, said the leader. But the Lord replied, you hypocrites, even of you, works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from his stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, now, y'all need to highlight this verse. Say, this dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful thing that he did. Turn, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what do you do when the enemy strikes? Say, neighbor, what do you do? Turn to your neighbor behind you, look them in the eye, even if they're at a distance. Say, neighbor, are you the enemy? Say, neighbor, what do you do? Say, neighbor, have you dealt with the enemy lately? And if you have, what do you do when the enemy strikes? Now turn back to him and say, neighbor, it's time to straighten up. I don't know about you, but I've discovered a strange phenomenon in life. And that is that in life, things that ought 
not to happen often happens. And things you think ought to happen sometimes never do. Can I say that again? I, I've discovered a strange phenomenon in life that in life, you need to get this. Things that ought not to happen often happens and happens quickly. And things you think ought to happen sometimes never do happen. So my advice to you is in life, you got to always be ready to brace yourself because the enemy is attacking folk right and left. It, it may not have happened to you yet, but just keep on living. We used to say this, we used to say that we may be up today and down tomorrow. But there's a few of us who will say that we may be up today and down today also. And contrary to popular view, Christians ought to understand that when it comes down to the attack of the devil, demonic, efforts that Christians are in many cases his key target. Have I got a witness? We talked about it last week when we looked at the book of Genesis and saw in the creation story that was written by Moses that it was not the intent of Eve to participate in the fall of man because at the end of the day she understood what the man said about her when he saw her first he said flesh of my flesh and bones of my bones in other words he said when he saw the woman my 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 I wish more men would go and say my 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 is that where that song came from? The truth of the matter is, it was not the intent of the woman to fall. She, she loved Adam, but when she looked up, Satan had appeared, I said to you, in the form of a snake, in the form of a serpent. But it really was not a snake or a serpent. That was a metaphor or an allegory or a simile. It means that he acted like a snake, but at the end of the day, Satan... As I said last week, is not what you think he is. Because Paul said he comes as a shining light. He does not appear always ugly and conniving and, and dangerous and all of that. He, he sometimes comes as a shining, attractive light. And whether you know it or not, Satan is alive and well on planet Earth. And Paul said he is like a roaring lion, say a roaring lion, walking about seeking whomever he may devour and he starts often with the Christian and he does not often start with the unsaved or the non-Christian because he already got them. He's trying to get us, Reverend Rivers, to fall as he has fallen himself from the grace of God. Jesus calls him the thief, say the thief, who cometh but to steal and to kill and to destroy. What am I suggesting to you? I'm suggesting to you that Satan wants to steal what God has given you. Can I help you out? We sing the song, This Joy I Have. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. But I stopped by to tell you, he is always trying to steal your joy. He'll make you come to church on Sunday morning and feel nothing. He'll make you doubt whether or not you have been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and been baptized. He'll make you think that there's nothing to church. He'll make you think 
that you ought not to come to church on a snowy Sunday morning when but 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 God will tell you that that God is good on a sunny morning as well as a snowy morning because God doesn't change. He's the same today as he was on yesterday and will be forevermore regardless of the weather. Have I got a witness in the house? He's trying to steal your joy. He wants you to sit there like the Lord ain't done nothing for you. But I'll stop by to tell you, I want to remind you that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, if he had not woke you up this morning, you would have found yourself in a cold grave. If the Lord did not open up your eyes, you would not have been able to drive your car this morning. If the Lord did not live, move, and have his being in your life, you wouldn't be in existence. If God didn't keep you in your right mind, you would have gone crazy with all that stuff you had to deal with a long time ago. And so he comes, say he comes, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He, he really does want to take you out of here. He, he really does want you to go batty. He really does want you to believe that there is no God. He really does want you to think that God can't help you now. It's the Job scenario. Job, you know, you've lost everything. You've lost your ten children. You've lost all of your cattle. You've lost all of your friends. You've got to go to a funeral services of the ten children. And look, Job, even your wife is telling you to curse God and die. He wants to take you out of here. I tell him all the time, I say, I say to him all the time, I said, listen, I was an immature Christian some years ago, and if you wanted to take me out, you should have took me out then. I, I'm better now, you see, and I'm, I'm stronger now, and I'm more trusting now, and I, I know the word more, and I've had a conversation with God. It's not a mutual conversation with God, but rather it is an ongoing conversation. When I wake up in the morning, I say, God, I know you're still there. Watch over me this day. And then when noontime come, I say, God, thank you for bringing me to noontime. And then when I lay my head down to sleep, I say, God, forgive me of my sins and watched over me all night long while the world is in turmoil. Keep your hands of protection around me. Put a fence around my house. Keep the thieves out and the robbers out. Keep me safe. Watch over my wife and make sure we wake up in the morning. And God says to me, all day and all night, my angels keep a watching over you. Don't the Lord watch over you? Hasn't the Lord been good to you? Hasn't the Lord protected you? Hasn't the Lord sustained you? Hasn't the Lord been with you? He promised never, never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Can you give him some praise right there? He's, Satan is the real enemy. Say he's the real enemy. And he strikes often, quickly, and pointedly. He, he, he knows who to attack, and he knows when to attack, and he knows where to attack you. And, and when he attacks you, I need to tell you, you know, I just said that Eve didn't understand, that, that, that he does not give you any advance warning. Turn to your neighbor and say, I know that's right. He strikes suddenly and decisively, and he knows who to strike when and with what. It happened to a nice lady named Val. Say Val. She was called Val affectionately by her family and friends. She was a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. She was raised and reared by Christian parents who taught her and her siblings the moral values and virtues of the Christian faith. She was raised in Sunday school and in church. She sung in the choir. She ushered at the door. She worked with the children in children's church. But Val was gainfully employed with the local school district. Her job was dealing with the finances of a certain school, and she was excellent at her work. In fact, all of her annual reviews were excellent simply because she did her job, and she did it well. Say well. 
Say good. She did it well. However, all of a sudden, she found herself under enemy territory, an enemy attack. Have you ever found yourself, all of a sudden, in enemy territory and up under enemy attack? One day, while the sun was shining and, and all appeared to be well, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, walked into her office and asked her a series of questions regarding a particular check. She had some knowledge of it, but like other disbursements, it too was handled with the same procedure and protocol as usual, say as usual. She answered all of the questions that the FBI's asked and thought the problem was resolved only to discover it became a two-year up and down train ride through the valley of difficulty. They stripped her, handcuffed her, and placed Val in jail and charged her with fraud, theft, and some other things. Say, Lord have mercy. Val, Val wept, cried. She was hurt, she was embarrassed, she was humiliated, she was angry, she was upset because she had embarrassed her own family. She, she finally came to the conclusion after much prayer that this was no one other than the notorious work of the devil and that she was under enemy attack. Can I tell you? What happened to Val in being attacked by the enemy, suddenly it can happen to the best of us. Sometimes it comes in the form of a certain phone call, tragedy, that instantly changes your life. Sometimes it occurs when you have raised your child in church have sent them to all of the classes and Sunday school and children's church and Easter program and Christmas program. You've done everything you knew to do. You've studied the word of God with them. You have prayed with them. You have sang with them. You have cried with them. You have sacrificed for them. And all of a sudden, these same children that you thought you knew, suddenly you don't know even who they are because suddenly they become rebellious against you. Have I got a witness in the house? And they rebel for no reason at all. You're talking about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde being adults. Some of the Dr. Jekylls and Mr. Hyde are five and six and seven year old kids. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know that's right. And sometimes it comes to you. It has come to people, you know. Uh, they are driving their cars. They are watching the law. They are driving at the speed that the, that the limit said you ought to be within. And suddenly, a drunk driver comes out of nowhere. Have you ever heard of that? And suddenly, their lives are changed. Have you, like me and Mrs. Macon, ever come home from a hard day work only to find your front door unlocked? Your stuff all over the place, your TV gone, burglars have broken in and went out the back window. It happened to us when we first got married. We had our apartment out here in Columbus, on Columbus Road, and we thought we was doing good. We had everything tied up, and we thought, just knew that everything was fine, living now in the suburbs. We just knew nobody steals and rampage and thievery doesn't occur in the birds. We came home that night. We was at a back part of the apartment. We looked and all of a sudden we noticed something that we knew wasn't right and that was our light was on in our bedroom and the window was open. I said to Marilyn, I said, well, I can agree that the light may have been on, but I don't agree that we left that window open. We opened that front door and we looked around and the door was already easy to get in. Didn't even have to use a key. Have you ever went to your house and locked the doors and came back and you didn't even have to use a key? We looked around, everything was stolen and rampaged and 
Suddenly, we went to look for our TV. We looked down the street, up the street, around the corner. <laughs> we wanted to catch somebody running down the street with our TV. But our lives were, were changed. Have you ever had a spouse to come home and for no reason at all decide that they want to leave you and the kids and they decide we want to go just because we no longer want to be married. It can happen any moment. Trouble in my way. I've got to cry sometimes. I don't know about you, but life is not like this, that, and the other. But sometimes life can be ugly. Life can be gruesome. Sometimes life can be hard. Sometimes life can be painful sometimes life can be crooked sometimes life can be messed up because there is an evil one who is going to and fro seeking whomever he may devour he's not discriminatory with people he's not discriminatory based upon gender he doesn't just come after men he comes after women he does not discriminate based upon age he doesn't just come after young people middle-aged folks but sometimes he hits old people as well you've got to watch satan because he is up under attack he's the enemy who comes to seek and to divide whomever he may destroy vow had that problem but so did watch this i'm almost finished but so did this lady in the 13th chapter of saint luke watch this y'all ready in verse one Luke tells the story. He says, one Sabbath day as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by, the, by an evil spirit. He, he saw a woman who had been crippled. Here is a woman. She is bent over, double over, over, and she had been bent over, she had been crippled, she had been looking down all of this time, she could not look up because she had some kind of physical deficiency, and she had it for 18 years. So why are you crying about a little headache? Why are you crying about a little backache one, two, or three days why are you always upset over a little pain in your body? Trouble don't last always. You may have some trouble today, but you need to look up because my mama used to sing a song that there is a bright side somewhere. And you need to recognize that there's always somebody else worse than you. Have I got a witness in the house? You may have a little ache in the leg, but what about that person who cannot even use their leg? Every now and then, you may have a little ache raising your hand, but what about that person who can't even move their hand? You may have a little trouble here and there, but what about that person who has trouble all the time? You may have had a little issue right now, but you ought to say, it might be bad today, but there is another day coming and I'm going to be better on tomorrow. You ought to stop complaining to God about the little things because there's somebody else who has a worse situation than you. You're complaining about your feet, but what about that person who don't even have legs at all? You're complaining about this, that, and you ought to learn not to complain, but to thank God for the blessing that God has given you anyhow. I told you about some anyhow folks. I may not feel good this morning, but thank God I ain't dead. I may not have my right mind, but thank God I ain't crazy. I, I may not have this and the other, but thank God it gets me around. I may not have a, a, a kind of car that I want, but thank God I'm able to get around. Thank God I got a little gas to put in. Maybe I ain't got a whole tank, but thank God I've got a quarter tank. You need to thank God for the little things and stop talking about what God ain't doing. What God has for you, can't nobody else get that. And what you want that somebody else has, you can't get that because it doesn't belong to you. Just turn to your neighbor and say, he's right. I don't like it, but he's right. For 18 years, she needs a healing. And the thing that have crippled her has become a habit. 
she is dealing with it every day. Some things that cripple you has become a habit. And, and you got to watch these things that cripple you and ultimately become a part of you that is not good for you. Have you, ever, have you ever met somebody who always complains? Some brothers live with them. And some sisters live with him. Always complaining. If it's raining, they're complaining. If it's snowing, it's too cold. If, if, it's, if, it's, if it's 90 degrees, it's too hot. Uh, if it's sunshine in the day, they'll say, well, well, don't worry about what's going on today because tomorrow it's going to rain. They are always complaining. Bad habits. Bad. Uh, uh, they, they, some folks just always cussing, you know. Even though they got their own favorite words, you know. That word has become a habit, you know. I, I was trying to bury somebody one time and I said to the person, I want to make sure I got this person right. This looks like an angel here. Is there anything that this person has done that's probably been a little negative? And she said, well, she's done everything right, but she uses a certain word all the time. It, it becomes a habit. Her, her being crippled becomes a habit. Now watch this. She's crippled and she goes to church. She's crippled, and she still is in church. She goes to church, and King Jesus is supposed to roll all burdens away, and yet she does not get healed for 18 long years. 52 weeks, if you will, out of a year. She's constantly going there, and yet still she doesn't get healed. There's a whole lot of folk who come to church, and they don't ever get healed. They come out, go out just like they came in, come back the next week, and they never get better, but rather they get better. And sometimes you're wondering why you don't see them no more. It's because they have allowed their situation to cripple them and to hand. They come in with problems. They go out with problems. They come in with problems. They go out with time and soon it becomes a habit. Say a habit. And she's crippled in church. That happens to us all the time. I tell you, if you have faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could speak to the mountains in your life and your life will be removed. I will say it Sunday after Sunday and yet and still, folk are crippled. They have eyes and cannot see. They have ears and cannot hear. I, I tell them to turn it over to Jesus and let him work it out. And yet and still they come in, hear the message, go back out and say, I got to do this thing on my own. Crippled. I tell them that it's time for you to give yourself to the Lord wholeheartedly. Turn it over to the Lord. Turn your spirit over to the Lord. And they hear it, walk out and say, not today. Have I got a witness in the house? They are crippled. They are crippled by their situation. They're crippled by their lifestyle. They never change. They're crippled. And yet still, they come to church Sunday after Sunday, crippled like this lady was for 18 long years. And watch this. The text says in verse 16 that while she is coming to church, Satan has her up under bondage. Verse 16. It says, Satan has up under bondage. I wish I could preach this, Larry. I know you're looking at your clock and want to go. The truth of the matter is that on Sunday morning, I just told you that Satan want to have you bondage. He does not want you to lift up your holy hands unto the Lord. He does not want you to praise God. He wants you to sit there as if the Lord has not done anything for you. He don't want you to say amen. He don't want you to say hallelujah. He don't want you to stand. He wants you to be a kind of ecclesiastical critic who looks around the church and say, look at her. She sitting up there shouting. She must have a whole lot of problems. Look at him over there. He's sitting up there crying. Look like a baby crying. Look at that person over there. He does not want you to go to a higher level, but rather he wants to keep you crippled. He doesn't want you to study to show yourself approved under God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. A workman ain't shamed to praise God. A workman ain't shamed to stand up and say thank you Jesus. A workman is not ashamed to say the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way that the Lord has been better to me than I've been to myself. 
that if I don't have a word, I'll just raise my hand because I know how good God has been to me. I know that the Lord healed me when I was sick. I know the Lord delivered me when I was going down the wrong way. I know the Lord made a way out of no way when there wasn't no way to go through. I know that God has been better to me than I've been to myself. And I'm not going to be crippled by somebody else's lifestyle and what they think of me. Don't criticize my praise because you don't know the problems that the Lord has brought me through. Have I got a witness in the house? Some people remain crippled. They come in church and say, I know that stuff ain't for me, but I'll stop by to tell you. Shouting is for me. Praise is for me. Saying hallelujah is for me. Saying thank you, Jesus, is for me. Saying glory is for me. Saying God, you've been better to me than I've been to my own self. I could have been dead and gone a long time ago had it not been for the Lord. Oh, my side. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody here been delivered from the Lord? Anybody here been healed by God? Come on, stand on your feet. Satan doesn't want you delivered. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. She must have known the old him of the old church of the slaves of yesterday when she looked up she said I looked at my hands my hands look new I, I looked at my feet and they did too he says to her you've been an outcast for 18 years and, and nobody has cared anything about you you're crippled. The demon have caught hold of your spirit that now has affected your body. He said, dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. And the text says that he touched her. That's the problem with some people on Sunday morning. You are afraid to be touched by God. You don't want the Holy Spirit to hit you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You think that you might start to act it out. Well, sometimes it's better to act out this way than to act out the other way. Have I got a witness? Somebody said he touched me and when he touched me I was made whole. Has he touched you? And watch this. The text says and And instantly, she could stand up straight. That's what God does for you. When he touches your heart, when he touches your mind, when he touches your body, when he touches your relationship with him, when he touches your feelings, when he touches your circumstances and your conditions, you stand up straight. It's time for somebody in the house to stand up straight and allow God to touch you. But she didn't walk away and just say, you know, God touched me. I'm feeling better now. I was crippled for 18 years and now I'm now able to, to walk. God has been good. The Lord is mighty. No, no. The text says that after God performed the miracle and did something for her, the text says, oh, how she prays. She went around dancing for the Lord. When I think about the goodness of God and all he's done for me makes me want to dance, 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 dance. All night she started running because the Lord put joy in her feet. She started to shouting 
and clapping because the Lord put clapping in a hand when the Lord done something for you there ought to be a reaction you ought to be praising him you ought to be thanking him you ought to be happy in the Lord something on the inside ought to be expressed on the outside when the praises go up the blessings will still come back down have I got a witness in the house what's wrong with you when was the last time you shouted because what God has done for you oh 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 Oh, 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 look what the Lord has done for me. He put running in her feet and clapping in her. Oh, oh, I wish one Sunday morning we would have an oh. How you praise God. Praise him in the snow. Praise him on a sunshiny day. Praise him in a storm like the disciple did when he was out there in a storm and the text says Jesus came walking on the water oh how she prays you wonder why you can't get better because you don't know how to praise the Lord we got to learn how to lift our hand in total total praise can you just play that I lift my hands in total praise and then we're going home total praise as your heads are bowed right now tell God you want to praise him like the lady did tell God you want to receive him like the lady did I will lift I to the She gave him 